E aí galera, tudo bem? Estamos aqui no DCS World F16 Viper. Essa sequência de vídeos que eu estou postando são dos arquivos lá do canal do Matt Agner, aquele CEO que posta os vídeos acadêmicos do F16 Viper. Até o outono de, desse ano de 2019, ele vai lançar vídeos explicando algumas coisas sobre o F16. Como os vídeos deles são públicos, eu vou reeditar eles e colocar aqui no nosso canal com legendas do YouTube. É, vou colocar a legenda do YouTube lá, vou copiar o vídeo e vou postar aqui no canal. Como os vídeos dele, eu já falei, são públicos, não vai ter problema. E como o meu canal não tem monitoração, ou seja, eu não ganho dinheiro para postar vídeo no YouTube, eu acredito que não vai ter problema. <cười> Mesmo assim, lá no na descrição do vídeo eu vou colocar todos os links dos arquivos original do Matt Egner. F16 Viper, acompanha aí. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. And the last few days I put together several videos to talk about some of the big features coming to the F16 in the next open beta update, like the uh, trackable scan radar mode as well as data link. But there are a lot of other features coming as well, so I thought I'd make a little video to talk about those. Let's get started. Okay, so first, let's take a look at the uh, CMDS features uh, on the countermeasure dispenser system. And the big uh, new feature here is the ability to manually program the four different manual channels. So on the mode switch, we'll set that to manual, and later on we'll be adding, of course, the semi-automatic modes. And then we have the four different programs to select from. Right now we're on program one, we can go two, three, four, let's go one for now, and then we'll also give power to the buckets. Now let's come up to the uh, DED display, and right now we're in the CNI, so let's go ahead and go list, and then seven for the CMDS page. And we can see here that we're in the master bingo page right now, and we have a uh, chaff selected at 20 as the bingo setting, uh, meaning that prior to 20 you'll have a low audio indication, at 1 you'll have a bingo indication, and when it hit 0 you'll have an out indication. And also when you release uh, any countermeasure, you'll have a shaft flare message as well, if you haven't enabled. So again, right now it's set to 20, but I can set that to say 10, 1, 0, and then enter. We dauber down, now we can do the same thing for the flares, make that say 20. And then 01 or 02 for uh, other ca uh, countermeasure systems. In this case, it will be the ALE50 -A -L -E uh, tow decoy at a later point. Dauber down again, we have the feedback, which will allow us to hear um, the different uh, voice messages like the chaff flare. We dauber down again, we have the request counter, and that will uh, give us a counter message uh, later on when we have the semi-automatic modes to let us know when to initiate the program. And then finally, dauber down one more time, we have the bingo setting to turn off the uh, the bingo warnings. Now let's go ahead and go dauber right. And we have the CMDS uh, chaff program set up. And right now we're at program one, corresponding to the uh, dial setting on the panel. So first we have a BQ or burst quantity, and this indicates uh, how many uh, bundles will come off in each burst. Right now it's set to one, but let's see, I'll set that to two. Uh, dauber down, we have the burst interval of the time between each bundle in the burst. Right now it says zero to zero. Let's set that to say C. 030. Dauber down again, we have the uh, sequence quantity of how many times this program is going to run. Right now it's 10 times. That's a lot. Let's go to two. And dauber down one more time, we have the sequence interval of the time between each sequence. And right now it's at one second. Okay, let's go double right one more time. And now we have the same thing now for flares for program one. So burst quantity is one. Let's uh, increase that to say four. So use the dauber switch to four and enter. Dauber down our burst interval of uh, zero to zero. Let's make that zero to five. Zero to five. And if you ever make a mistake, you just hit the recall button to uh, head back. And then we have our sequence quantity. How many times is this gonna run? Let's just run it, how about just once? And because it's just once, uh, the sequence interval doesn't really uh, makes sense at this point, so we'll just keep it at one for now. Now, if we come back out, and if we press forward on the CMDS switch to activate the manual program.
And in that way, you can set up uh, four different programs uh, during your mission. OK, let's take a look at the next item. OK, so let's take a look at the external lighting panel now. Uh, first, on the master dial, we'll set that to uh, normal. And we do that, we also have our wingtail and our fuselage position lights currently set to bright. We could also set those to off and then also to dim. And those are the uh, green and red lights around the aircraft. And right now they're in a flashing state. We can also set that to a steady state as well. Now it's also important to know that if you set the wingtail to off, then the formation dial here actually controls the light. So right now it's a full bright. Let me go ahead and rotate this back. Now you see that they're off. Uh, next, we have the uh, anti-collision or the beacon light. Uh, right now, we have settings for off and one through four. So for example, if you set it to uh, four, it will flash uh, four times with a break between. And this can be really handy if you have a flight where you have um, uh, the flight set to one, uh, wingman two set to two flashes, wingman three set to three flashes, and wingman four set to four flashes. Uh, pretty handy way in that way. Uh, then we have the refueling door light. So if you open up the refueling door and you have the refueling light on, you'll have a light that illuminates the, the door area. Next, the uh, formation dial, we go full bright on that. Uh, we can see that we have uh, formation lights near the base of the tail. And there's also one underneath the aircraft as well. Uh, finally, rotate back this way, we have our landing and taxi lights. So with the taxi light on, we have the taxi light eliminated. And if we go for landing, we have the landing light eliminated. So all pretty straightforward. OK, next item. And last, you have a series of other items. Uh, the first is the ability to uh, cycle your air-to-air -air weapon using the HOTAS now. So by pressing and holding the uh, nose wheel steering slash missile step button on the stick for more than half a second, you can cycle the air-to-air -air weapon. So I'm cycling between the AIM-9 and AIM-120 by just pressing and holding that button. Uh, next. Uh, rather than just moving the uh, point of view in the cockpit up and down for the seat, we've now actually animated the animation to actually move that whole seat up and down. And it's a very minor thing, but we've added the ability to adjust the brightness of the AOA indexer. And also with the uh, Hemix, uh, now in order to turn it off and on, you can only do so with a long press down on the DEMA switch. And a couple other, other items to note as well. So with the Hornet, there was something called Waypoint Zero, where the first uh, waypoint in the series was Waypoint Zero. However, in the Viper, uh, there's no steer point zero. The first steer point is steer point one. So it's a bit of a change uh, we've enacted. And another change we put in, uh, which actually affects all DCS aircraft, is that earlier we had it such that in order to have your wingmen use their radars, you had to actually tell them to do that over the radio. Uh, instead now, it will be automatic. So once they're up in the air with uh, no weight on wheels, they will actually turn on the radars automatically without you having to order them every time. Anyhow, folks, I really hope you enjoyed this little update, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.